Welcome back, Platinum Hunter Sons, to another episode of Platinum Trophy Review, or PTR for short. Here at PTR, I go over a game's trophy list that I recently platinumed to give you tips and tricks that I learned along the way to help you get those shiny digital trophies. So put on your favorite Kung Fu trousers, practice your best Bruce Lee impressions, and get ready to bring honor to your trophy list as we undertake a vengeful quest in this week's game, Sifu. But before we begin, Make sure that you're subbed to the channel for more videos like these and other gaming related content. Drop a comment on your thoughts of the game and don't be afraid to hit that like button and follow me on Twitter. So what is Sifu? Well, Sifu is an action beat em up video game developed and published by French studio Slowcap. Set in modern day China, players control the child of martial arts school's Sifu, Master, who seeks revenge on those responsible for their father's death. Every time the protagonist dies, they are resurrected by a magical talisman and age up, gaining access to more powerful attacks but reducing their health. When the player character becomes too old, they can permanently die, in which case players must restart the level from the beginning and from the same age as their initial attempt. The game was released on the 8th of February 2022 for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Sifu has a total of 43 trophies, 3 gold, 13 silver, 26 bronze, and of course, one platinum trophy. As always, I recommend playing on the easier setting to save time. But don't let easy mode fool you, as you will have to face enemies that will punish you if you don't know the mechanics, and bosses are no pushover either. To be able to make your runs even easier, familiarize yourself and practice the parry, as successful parries will leave enemies wide open for some punishment, but I'll get into that later on. As per usual, we will start off with the collectibles. Now Sifu has a total of 5 areas in which you will find roughly around 16 collectibles per area. However, there is a slight twist. You will not be able to get all the collectibles in the first run. Let me explain. To be able to reach the final collectibles, you will either need a key or code that you will acquire in a later level, forcing you to replay all areas. Now this might come off as off-putting, but during your collectible run, you will also acquire keys to doors that are shortcuts and will greatly reduce the time spent in a level. No great example is level 3. Once you acquire the code for the elevator, you can go straight to the boss fight, only needing to fight 2 minions before her. In the description, I will leave the guides to all areas collectibles. Once you have collected everything, the following trophies will pop. Now when it comes to runs, in a perfect world, you will need to do 3. Let me explain. Our first run will be getting all the available collectibles and unaliving the bosses getting our revenge. Our second run will be clean up on the collectibles, ticking off any miscellaneous trophies outstanding and sparing all bosses to be able to get the trophies associated with them. Our third run will be to finish the game with 25 years or less. Now there are three trophies associated with age. Prodigal Child, which is to beat the game while being 25 or less. Scarless beat the game being 50 or less, and Old Child, which is to reach your oldest appearance, the ripe old age of 70. On our first playthrough, don't be afraid of dying, as you will need to reach the age of 70. In fact, try to die on purpose sometimes to help speed up the process. On our third run, we will go for Prodigal Child, but more on that later. Kill Nil is to beat any boss without dying. Once you have the basics down, this task will seem much easier than you think. The best boss to do this with would be the first one you encounter in the slums. Stunt Master is to climb over things in your environment 30 times. Tables, desks, etc. Just press X next to a table and you will vault over it. This should come naturally, but if not, just cheese it by the nearest table once all enemies are defeated. Street Fighting is to use items as weapons, basically throwing things at enemies 30 times. Bottles are the best for this, especially in level 2 as there are tons of them. Also, if you unlock the skill Environmental Mastery, you'll be able to kick chairs, knocking down enemies. Speaking of unlocking skills, there are two trophies associated with them. Life is your teacher and state of constant learning, which is to permanently unlock a skill. To be able to do this, you will need to buy said skill five times before defeating the final boss. You buy skills with XP. You get XP multipliers, max times five, by defeating enemies and not taking hits. If you do take a hit and go down to times one, 
By pressing right on the D-pad, you will taunt enemies which will raise your multiplier. Key gone mind, breath and essence is to purchase the highest reward at the shrines. At shrines, you can purchase only one reward at a time. Just make sure to keep your multiplier up and you shouldn't have any trouble purchasing the rewards. Keeping with skills, the trophy Master of the Phoenix Eye Fist is to use every focus attack once. To be able to do this, you will need to purchase more focus at the statues. Focus attacks are incredibly useful, so don't be afraid to use them. Path of Prospect is the focus attack Kalbot that you will discover during your collectible run towards the end of the museum. And once unlocked, you can purchase the skill in the skill tree. Another reason to keep your multiplier up is for I Know Kung Fu and Ferocity, Speed, Strength, Accuracy. I got all of this in the first level, so make sure that multiplier is at times 5. The 36th Chamber of Kung Fu requires you to perform every type of takedown in the game at least once. Now this looks scary as there are a lot of them. You've got bare hand, weapons, wall, ledge and ground takedowns. This should come naturally though as I got it on my second run. Just make sure to take down enemies every chance you get. Let's move on to level specific trophies. Level 1, the squats, has rumble in the hangar. It is to clear the hangar in less than 1 minute and 20 seconds. Very easy. Just make sure to have a weapon on you and use heavy attacks. Level 2, the club, has pit protector. Beat the juggernaut, the big dude, before any other enemy. Before you get to the pit, you will see two female NPCs behind the bar saying that bets are closed. Defeat them and behind the bar you will find the bat. Use this to make quick work of the fat boy. Level 3, the museum, has be like water my friend. Here you have to throw an enemy into the fountain from a higher floor. Make your way to the second floor and there will be two baddies waiting there for you. Bring them close to the edge and when you see the take down button pop up, press square and X to throw them over the edge. Also, in this level, this will be the best place to get sword stained with blood, which is to kill an enemy with one shot attack using a sword. Before going into level, make sure to purchase the skill Charged Backfist, and at the start of the level, when the two NPCs approach you, one will have a sword. Get the sword out of his hand and then hold the triangle. Once the attack is charged, release and you should kill the NPC in one shot. In level 4, after the elevator crashes, you will start to make your way down deep into the tunnel. Just jump over the ledge and take damage to save time while unlock. Note that you will die doing this. And finally, in level 5, you will need to throw an enemy into the mountains or warriors from the mountain to unlock. The best area to do this will be in the courtyard. Just like in the museum, bait the enemies near the ledge and when the takedown option pops, throw them fools over into a rocky death. The trophy that will give you the most hassle to complete will be Kung Fu Tussle which is to hit three enemies at once. There are a few ways to go about doing this. The first would be in the courtyard at level 5. Run all the way up to the stairs and get the pole of the dude near the door. To then run all the way down and try and bait as many enemies into the tight space at the bottom. You will need the skill 360 skill focus to be able to pull this off and two bars of focus. However, I would recommend not doing this method as I tried several times to no success, as the enemies always spread out way too far. The best way will be in the first level, the hall fight. As you enter the hall, one of the very first two enemies is holding a pipe. Get that bad boy into your hands and run straight into the middle of the hall surrounding yourself. Once there, press triangle to heavy attack, which will make your character swing the pipe around. I got this on my first try. Okay, so our first one was to enact vengeance on the five bosses and to learn the in and outs of the game. Our second run will be to spare all bosses so we can get the following trophies. The last collectible and the true ending. Now to be able to spare a boss, you need to break his or her structure, yellow bar above their health, twice during the second phase of the fight. The best way to break a boss's structure is to parry their attacks and to counter with light attacks, as we don't want to kill them. Once you've broken their structure twice, the spare option will pop up. You will need to be close to the boss for this and quick. Don't go for the prodigal child trophy for this one as trying to spare a boss for the first time means you will take loads of damage and will probably die a lot. Just an FYI, the final boss, to be able to beat him, you must parry his attacks. If you just straight up attack him, he will block everything and parry you. Once all bosses are spared and trophies popped, 
we shall now attempt to defeat the game in 25 years or less. Now we've obviously unlocked shortcuts in every level to be able to finish them much quicker. However, I would recommend playing the first level in its entirety as to have extra XP at hand just in case. The rest of the levels we will make use of the shortcuts. It goes without saying, but try to get to level 5 with the maximum age of 25. Before you get to the final boss, there are two shrines you can interact with. But if you have died a few times, use the XP unlocked to take 5 years off. This usually costs 1000 XP, so make sure you have this on you. Another thing you might want to look into and practice is auto saving right before a boss fight. This way, if you mess up, just close the game and download your last auto save. This will save a ton of time replaying levels. Once you've kicked and punched and kung fu'd your way through the city, you should be the proud owner of an ultra rare 4.7% platinum trophy. So is Sifu worth platinuming? I had a blast playing this game. Its learning curve does take a while to sink in, but by your second run, you should be knocking over enemies in your sleep. I also found the game to be surprisingly replayable. I messed up on my collectible run three times, making me need to rerun certain levels. However, the game is so enjoyable that this did not bother me. Enemy variety will keep you on your toes. Epic fight locations will make you think you're in a John Woo film and each boss fight is a world of its own. The way the game makes you feel when you get that perfect parry and you go all fist of fury on your opponent's chest will have you screaming like Bruce Lee. Sifu's Platinum is an 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching Platinum Hunters, I hope you found this video useful. What are your thoughts on this game? And what were your favourite fight scenes? Don't forget to sub, like and comment. Thanks again for getting this far and I'll see you all next time.